Hey you guys, what is up? How's it going? Logical Gaming here with my very first Project Spark tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be about vectors and how you can use them. And the reason I'm doing vectors is because I wish there was a tutorial. Maybe there was that I couldn't find um, about what they are and how to use them. So you can find vectors under values and they're kind of variable. And you can name it whatever you want. This one's named create position. And each vector the purpose of vectors is to put an object exactly where you want it, on the screen or in world, in 2D or 3D. So you have your X, your Y, and your Z. And so the X controls left and right, and the Y controls up and down. We're just talking about 2D at the moment, and we'll move on to 3D later. So the first thing you need to do is set what you want your vector variable to be. So we'll say, you have to say vector, whatever variable you have, then whatever um, kind you want, equals, and then whatever numerical value. And another very important thing is that on the screen, the middle is zero, and so it only goes over one and over to negative one. And so all your values are going to be negatives pretty much. So I'll copy and paste this and just change it to a Y. And then we have to choose what to display. So we'll, um, you go to interface, display, and then very important thing is to choose on screen at because usually um, it's really easy just to use these um, where on the screen you want it to be but you need to use the on screen at tile and then you put your variable but we also need an object so I'll choose object doesn't matter what it is we'll just use this acorn because it's right at the front and so it should display at over 0.5 and up 0.5 so right around here there it is so that's all you need to know about putting an object exactly where you want it on the interface. Okay, one last quick thing about 2D objects before we move on to 3D is um, when you use the on-screen at, I mean, not the on-screen at, when you use the screen location, so we say, let's say this, we want it to be screen top left, okay? And if we copy and paste this and also do another one on screen top left, we'll get rid of our create position. They will be, uh, they'll be on top of each other like that. It automatically moves them on top of each other. I mean, not on top of each other. Um, that separates them. If you want them to be like overlapping or directly on top of each other, um, you have to use the on-screen at. And so if we do this, change this to on-screen at as well. And we'll need to... Um, I'll do a different object, because if we do this right now, you can't even tell. They'll be perfectly on top of each other. So we'll choose a different object. So let's say we do... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Dang it, I don't have that. Um, this bird egg, for example. They'll be on top of each other. Like that. So that is one cool use. You can make, like, health bars or something that overlaps slightly. Or really, anything you want. Now, onto the 3D. Okay, so the pretty much the primary difference between 2D and 3D, we'll clear out this, um, is you need an, an X value. I mean, not an X, a Z. And so um, we'll set our create position like we did before, the Z. And we want, I want to make an object that is relative to my player's current position. So we want it to be like over 5, um, up 5, and to the right 5. Uh, from where my, wherever my player is at that moment. So what we need to do, we need to go to objects and me, so that means my. So my position, wrong click, my position, and then we choose Z, because it has to match, or else it won't work. So my position Z plus, and we can do whatever number we want. So we'll let's just go, let's just do four, or five, why not five? And so I'll do the same thing with these other two. Copy and paste this. And we'll change it to... Okay, and another very key thing is in the three dimension, Y is up and down, and X and Z control forward, backward, left, and right. Um, which kind of confuses me sometimes because, I don't know, it seems like the Z should, should change it up. So I want to make an object that... Um, isn't any higher than my player's current position. So we'll just make it not, we'll get rid of the plus five with the Y. And so now, 
oh, another very important thing. There's lots of important things. <laughs> I say that a lot. Um, is you need to change your on-screen at tile to at position. It was right there. To at position, because then it knows you want to do a 3D. Um, so now if we go into test, and it actually made this sweet little graph here uh, with a different camera angle. And so if we go to that camera angle, it's right there at, at 5, 5. Um, 5 units or meters. I think they base it on meters. Project Spark length. That's what it is. Um, and so, yeah, let's just add a height to this. Just so we can show that now. So we'll give it a height of 3. Or nothing. 3. If we go in and do the same thing, as you can see, it's now it's higher up. So this is really useful when you want to make an object exact position. So if we go to tab, it looks pretty much the same, but it's higher. Okay, one last cool thing with these vector variables is that you can actually just display the straight up vector variable. So if we just do that, and I'll make this be um, above, just so we can see it. It'll actually show you your three values, x, y, and z. Um, as they change because it's based on the player's position. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of like Minecraft where you can see your coordinates or any other game where you can do that. Um, so that's pretty useful as well. And then uh, if we want to get really tricky and kind of inception, we can make this, um, we'll display our create position at position, create position. Now I don't know if this is going to work. We're going where no Project Spark player has ever gone before. But we'll see if it works. So it should be up high. Yeah, check it out. It's up high over there. That's pretty sweet. It, you can't really tell like uh, how far away it is. Huh? But hey, that works. Ta-da. So yeah, you guys, thanks for watching. Um, I love your guys' comments. And really, I need you guys to comment lots of other uh, tutorial ideas. Because I don't know what you guys need to know. This is pretty much what I needed to know that I learned. Um, so yeah, if you comment what you need help with or what you think a good tutorial would be or anything, um, I'll totally make it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Um, it's awesome, and keep it up. <laughs> See you guys later.